Good morning and happy Mother's Day. My name is August Wilson, and I have essentially grown up here at St. Albans, having attended both church and school here since I was little. I'm grateful for the, for the foundation both the church and the school have provided for me, and I feel well equipped to, equipped to step into the next part of my life at Texas A&M University and College Station this, later this summer. I've thought a lot about what I'd like to say this morning, and after reading over several, several very different passages from both the Old and New Testaments, I decided that the message in John 14 really got the wheels in my head turning. In these verses, specifically verses 15 through 21, Jesus is explaining what is to come for his followers after his death. What is to come is the spirit of truth or the Holy Spirit. Jesus essentially explains that this spirit is the highest honor which you can receive from God. This is a spirit that cannot be received by the world, but that will be with you forever, that you know and that knows you. Jesus go on, goes on to mention in the gospel that no matter what, he will never abandon us. Even as the world falls into the traps, of daily living and forgets what is most important. He still states that he know, that he will know and reside with those who take the time to know and remember him. This is the part in the passage that really made me stop and think. In today's world, we are so caught up in materialistic things that are essentially idols to us. Without even realizing that we idolize them, we make these things that are so in, insignificant and inconsequential to, out to be our highest priorities. We pay attention to them first, we give them the most time, we follow up with them, and return to them over and over again, sometimes many times a day. We give these things way more of ourselves than we give to God. These accidental, accidental idols often center around appearances and could include money, fame, or even social media. I think it is interesting in this passage that Jesus points out that the Holy Spirit is with those that know him. Even as the rest of the world doesn't even recognize him, he says the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. In today's world, we are so caught up in seeing and being seen, perhaps especially in high school, where we are all testing the waters of our own interests and ideas. As young people, we want to fit in as well in while also standing out. We want to be included in the conversations, invited to the parties, listed among the winners, celebrated by our friends and classmates and teachers and parents. This means that appearances are especially important. In a world where social media means that means that appearances are constantly being posted and tweaked and shared, where status changes by the minute and keeping up with updates is nearly a constant process. It is a drastic thought to, it is a drastic thought to consider that Jesus himself told us when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. A world that is so caught up in the appearance of change and the appearance of things cannot see the most important thing. God gave us the gift of his spirit in us, living in ourselves, to know and guide us. But if we aren't careful, we'll miss it completely. In 1 Kings 19, verse 11, we read about God revealing, revealing himself to Elijah. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Elijah recognized that this still small voice was God's. In a world that is fighting for our focus all the time and all about and all but demanding that we continually put ourselves on display in a bid for the attention and applause of the people around oof, the people around us, it is difficult. It is very difficult to hear a still small voice. And if we can't hear this voice, how can we possibly know and be led by that voice? As I prepare for college, I reminded that, the middle, that in the middle of the fanfare surrounding graduation and new beginnings, there's still that still small voice leading me to the next thing, directing my steps, watching over me. I want to be careful to pay attention to the voice, to put down the idols that compete for my attention and distract me from God's leading. I want to be counted among those things that see him and know him and are, are known by him. The rest of it is all just noise. <laughs>